title is Spokey SM9. Shall we see what the new SM9 are all about? Right, cross it here, and of course, testing. We've got some indoor testing as well. Let's see what SM9 is offering from Titleist. I've got a 48 in my hands here, and it looks pretty Vokey nice. Take that one. Lovely. So let's talk about versatility to kick us off. So I've got a few different grinds and bounces and finishes and lofts here just to show you what Vokey have always really done really quite well, which is give you every option. I mean, for some golfers, it's almost too many options and other companies do it as well, but they're giving you so many options that if there's something that you want a wedge to do, there's a pretty good chance SM9 is going to have that club. So if you want a fat sole, a fin sole, a different grind, you're going to want a different look in its finish. Um, you, you're going to find that they probably offer what you need. And going down the rabbit hole of why it's important that, say, the toe is shaved off here and the heel and the back's relieved, compared to, say, this one that has this kind of straighter grinding at the back, is a different video, and I've got videos on that. Maybe check that out. But what Titleist are going to do is tick the versatility box, and SM9 is no different, really, to SM8. And that statement in itself is something that's going to play through in this video. I am not seeing SM9 at the minute, feels wise, look wise, really, as anything that different to SM8. And you could argue that's not really a bad thing, is it, in a world of tech driven craziness? Um, you've got a club that's popular, that works, why would you change it that much? This feels like an 8.2 rather than a 9, even though it's called an SM9. Let's hit some different shots with the different wedge. Winter lie, pure mud under the ball, relatively delicate shot. I'm going to use my, let's go my 52 here. So it's the 52F, relatively fat, flat sole, not too much loft. And I'm just going to gently bounce that sole into that mud to get a relatively nice shot. So plenty of grass on this one, slightly tucked pin. So not loads of green to work with, but it's wet. It will stop. Go 60S. I mean, that just glides through, feels nice. Not a bad result from that grass. That's a winter lovely lie, like easier that one. Right, 48 degree on this one. This is a 10 f so we're not really getting any relief this you could call this like a gap wedge pitching wedge basic little chip and run down the hill a little bit too far and over broken unfortunately so not my best but i can my putter would save today so when it comes to versatility i would say yeah there's plenty and always has been with Vokey and there should be you know it's a committed wedge brand that all feels Vokey normal I would say Vokey normal for lots of people surely is a good thing isn't it that's what we want like, like these players don't need to be redesigned do they So Titleist are talking about distance control with CG control and flight control, so trajectory and distance. Let's go inside to show you the importance of this and why at the top of your wedge, so in a 60 here, you're going to see a thicker bit at the back that you don't see down in gaming position compared to, say, like a 4 or 52 here where you don't get, see the difference in the size of the chunk at the back of the club. Let's show you why trajectory in turn distance control flight might help or hurt your game. So I've got three wedges inside here. We've got the 48 and I've got a 60 and a 56, slightly different finishes. I just want to show you what happens when I hit just a group of pitch shots. I'm 50 yards out here at the 18th for St Andrews. I'm going to hit the 60 degree first. Let's just show you why matching or trying to control launch and those ideas, and we'll talk about spin as well, could be really important for you. take a fraction off those but take those two. What's always really interesting with Vokies is they're not a forged club and everyone talks about forging so much in irons and they actually feel relatively 
firmish, not in a bad way, it's just an interesting thing that I think lots of people get mixed up on. Maybe took a little off that. Yeah, right on the line. So 56 degree next. What's good with doing this indoors is that we can control everything as much as a human can control anything in golf because my variation definitely will play, play through as well. But we've got clean clubs, clean grooves, nothing getting stuck, well, very little getting stuck between uh, ball and groove and face. And um, we've got a clean ball as well, all dry. So when you get outside, what you'll find is some of these numbers move more because of the conditions. And that is another reason why they're always going to try, all the wedge companies are going to try and control spin up to its max and they're going to try and control launch as much as they can because the course is going to constantly rip spin away from you and it's going to constantly challenge your ideas of higher and lower spin shots as the conditions change. That's the beauty of how difficult golf can be. So same distance, so we're still at 50 yards and I've now got the 56. So I'm changing my, the way I play it speeds a little bit, feeling of length for swings, to try and get, in theory, a very similar result. Three nice shots there with a 56. You can see it was going in, like the total height looked lower, didn't it? It's so obviously same shot, now using the 48. Now I'm not laying more loft open or taking loft off these. In my mind, I'm playing them all very much in a similar way. I'm just playing with the speeds. So I feel the length of swing that I'll play. You can see that one's going in lower. I feel like I made a smaller swing. You see it's rolling on more. Okay, so that's three of each. Let's just, and you can see they're all very equivalent shots, like a slightly better data set with the 56, and you could hit loads more shots to let this play out to a bigger, um, you know, data set that'll give you a little bit more fine information on the difference of the two. But I think this will shock you what control of launch does between the different lo lofts and why companies like Titus are talking about that. So you can see here, just average 8.5 foot with the 56 was the better result, 21 with the 60 and um, 20 foot with the 48. I would probably choose quite often in that situation because of the ridge before and I want to get it and stop it quite quickly. I'd actually choose the 60 more often than not in that situation, believe it or not. So it's this angle here, look at the launch angle. Look how close they all are. So this has a nearly two degree standard deviation knocking this down to near 30. This has a one degree standard deviation knocking this down to 31. The 56 and the 60 cross over on launch. They are literally identical. We had to go down to a 48 to get a difference. And to be fair, if I hit enough 48s, I think you would find there would be one degree at most standard deviations or, or, or deviation between all these three uh, launches. Controlling the launch like this, so my ball basically is launching through a very similar window for each shot, is often a sign of a better wedge player. It means they've got level of control of strike and delivery aloft. And what this, that this then allows them to do that you could see in that little demonstration is it allowed me to concentrate purely on the speed I was putting that club to that ball at. I was just thinking of how hard I need to hit it to throw it X distance. Almost like throwing a bit of paper to the bin. I'm not throwing one like this and then one flat. I just want to throw it at one level, move my arm one way if you like. And I'm just going to play with the speeds to make that get to the bin if I miss with the first one. Also you can see the ball speeds are really quite close as well. The 60 I was throwing it that little bit further you can see from the blue line up here. So really I'm matching so much to do with the launch and the speed I'm putting in that to try and get that ball to carry as you can see here very close to each other and then running out very very close to each other. So if I now take the 56 and I manipulate the launches so now I'm trying to say go in a lot higher obviously these are shots I feel I can pull off but what happens is I feel like I'm not going to be as consistent at this 
if I don't play, launching that up at 35. Because we're now talking really specialized kind of shots, which are gonna take a lot more practice and experience. I mean, that one there, that's a low 56, it's the furthest away. Obviously I'm talking and hitting these. I feel I could pull these off and they're skills to have, launching that one down at 25. So I can obviously take loft off and add loft on with that test. I just hit all pretty much the same shot with different lofts of club, but the launch stayed the same, allowing me to really play with the speed, to dial in my distance. And what you're gonna find from amateur golfers is they hit poppers, high poppers. So they do deliver the wedge in the wrong loft and it shoots up high, short, right, and they get you know the wrong connection on the face, the face was delivered at the wrong angle. None of what 35 launch on that one, none of what Titleist are doing is gonna help you with that, that's your skill. But when you're delivering your numbers, like you could see I was at the start, it's gonna deliver me a nice consistent launch window to get that ball through. And all I'm now dealing with is the pace. That's why they're playing with this progressive CG, uh, CGs to help with launches. SM9 also talks about maximum spin, and that's a word in wedges I want you all to try and take with a pinch of salt. It's maximum spin, but there's no wedge out there, I don't know, that doesn't deliver maximum spin. I'm just gonna show you a test now. We're about 75 yards out. I'm gonna use the 56 to show you what happens with the spin. I don't see any wedges particularly spinning more than other wedges when I've tested wedges over the year. And it's something I think amateurs talk about so much with the wedges, oh, I want it to spin. Things that affect spin the most is where you strike it, the quality of the face, and they're all good qualities now, but as wedges wear down, you might feel like newer grooves, newer milling on the face, fresher faces can retain spin, which is true, it, that is a thing, but we're talking like, you have to play from for quite a long time. Titleists are actually saying not that long, but remember, they're selling wedges. So 75 yards out, 56. See if I've dialed in my distance, I think that's a little long. Now bear in mind, this is one of the most controlled wedge situations I could ever be in. I'm just gonna hit a series of shots here and show you what happens with the spin to show you who really is in control. So I'm playing them all one standard, a shot or style. I'm not trying to manipulate spin. I'm trying to launch them through the window. I want to launch and just trying to dial in my speed of swing to get the distance somewhere near there. So these were spinning nearly 8,000, 7,700 revs, ball speed was 69 miles an hour, carried 77 yards, a good batch of shots, and the standard deviation of spin was 387. So that's nearly 800 up and down of that number. So it can go 400 above it nearly and 400 below it almost. So it's a good style deviation. And this is the most controlled of all the situations, you go and take that outside. There are bigger factors out there affecting how that ball spins than what they say with their grips. Yes, they're gonna be precision. Yes, they're gonna be better than last time and all the rest of it. And yes, this will spin to the max, as in the same with nearly any other wedge that you buy out from the main manufacturers on the market. The more, the reason amateurs dial into the word spin is they see it on telly, it's something they desire and it makes it sellable for wedges. The more you buy wedges not around trying to generate maximum spin and making sure that the lofts are dialed into how you need your lofts to be and the shapes are where they need to be in the fields and that the club can be performed in many different, or you can perform in that club in many different situations, mud lies, dry lies, fluffy lies, bunkers, loads of sand, not many sands. That's where the real gains can be in these wedges. So I'm just gonna hit some now to give you an idea with a 56 degree wedge, say in one of the Clevelands here, this one is maybe a year old. Same ball, same distance. Right, let's just look at the numbers between those two, slightly short of that one, unfortunately. Oh, look, that's gonna spin off the front. <gasps> Too much spin. So I just called the second wedge iron just to change the difference in it. You can see the launch angle very similar within two degrees, almost overlapping standard deviation. Slightly smaller batch, but the spin you would argue is higher. So people might say this one is spinning a little bit higher. I, I don't. I, I see them as looking at the standard deviation overlaps them. They're the same. They're spinning the same. You hit enough shots, this data will settle to be pretty much the same. 
I think the other thing to bear in mind as well when it comes to the wedge and the word spin, I think you're going to find like fresh wedges might spin better than really old wedges. That's a year old wedge that was spinning absolutely fine. Um, what level of control you've got over strikes is going to influence it more than anything else. What I see in SM9 is a wedge spinning as maximum like other wedges. I see a wedge that sounds and looks and feels as good as any Vokey wedges. If you've got SMA, would you change? Like, I wouldn't. What's the difference? I'm not seeing really any difference in, in SM8 there. And I do think products have a cycle, which I understand is a business decision. It's just the cycle that you go around that we release a new one. I think I see this more as a iPhone 12X than an iPhone 13. And even that's not really the biggest shift on as well, if you know what I mean. What I see is just really good wedges again from Titleist as expected, looking, sounding, performing as good as anything. And definitely in the versatility world of giving you the options. I'm not sure there's many out there that there's some that match, but not many more give many more options than what they do. Great set of wedges. Let me know, are you a Vokey fan or not? Have you got SM5 and it's time that you went to SM9? Is it that kind of OSM4 and you're thinking, I mean, this would be such a seamless upgrade for so many of the SM fans out there because um, if you have got those older models, SM8, I don't think, like I said, you would need to, particularly unless you want to, because um, it's just, it looks like a Vokey and it does what you expect Vokeys to do, which is kind of what I would want from this kind of club. Very good, thanks for watching. Let me know if this makes sense or not. And did that launch idea change your ideas a little bit about pitching? It's an interesting one, isn't it?